my game. Hi. 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 So good for me to be here with you today. Thank you for having me. I'll tell you a little bit about me. My name is Ken and I am married to Carol. And we have five children. Oh. And uh, they're all out of the house. <laughs> oh, happy day. <laughs> no, we have six grandchildren as well, so we're very happy. God blessed us with three sons and then two daughters. So, so this, um, I was born in Toronto. So I'm kind of coming home. Yeah. And uh, I had the privilege of being a part of our church. We started in 1989. And, uh, you know, coming in today to you, enjoying the worship and all of your heart has been a real, real blessing to me. It reminds me of when we started our church. Yeah, so thank you. And thank you for singing some songs in English. Yeah, great, great worship. What is our biggest problem? What is our biggest problem? If you could come up with a list of problems, that human beings have what would go on the top? Would it be pride? Would it be anger? Would it be lust? What is our biggest problem? I'm going to give you a word that I think is our biggest problem. It's idolatry. Yes. I think we have a big problem with idolatry. When you read the Bible, there's certainly a lot to say in the Bible about idolatry. And I, I believe that's there because this is our biggest problem. We have a passion as humans to worship something. We look for something that will give our life meaning, security, and significance. So we will worship money. Because we believe money will give us significance and security. Sometimes we'll worship marriage because we believe if we find the right person they will give our life significance and security. Or sometimes it's a job. Fame. All kinds of things that we pursue. And God wants us to stay away from idols. So, I want to look at Psalm 33 with you tonight. Where God is going to tell us why He is the best one to worship. And in Psalm 33, we find God calling us to worship Him. And then telling us why. So I'm going to start by looking at the first three verses there in Psalm 33. In which God calls us to worship Him. 
And you'll notice that what he's doing here is he wants us to be active in worship. So he uses a lot of verbs. So okay. Shout for joy to the Lord, you righteous praise befits the upright. One. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Does it say sing? Um, yeah, uh, so only verse one? Yes, does it say sing? So you notice God, God calls us to sing or to shout. Some of, us, some of us can't sing, so we have to shout. <laughs> You'll notice the second verse, Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre, make melody to him with the harp of ten springs. springs. Again, he's telling us what to do. And then verse 3, sing to him a new song, play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. So the psalmist tells us, first of all, I want you to worship God. I want you to sing. I want you to shout. I want you to play instruments. I want you to do all that to shout out and sing and praise me. And now he's going to tell us why. So in the rest of the psalm, he's going to give us three reasons why we should worship God. The first one is that we need to be awed by God's power. We need to be awe, in awe over the power, how powerful God is. And what he does right away is tells us how powerful God is by describing God. Um, and we, okay, let me back up a little bit. Okay. Um, there is a big word that theologians use called omnipotence. It means that God is all powerful. It means that God is, um, has power without limit and without cost. Without limit means that God can do anything he wants to do. Now he can't do anything that's self-contradictory. He couldn't make a square circle. <laughs> he couldn't make a rock too big for him to lift. That's called being self-contradictory. That contradicts itself. But God's power is without limit. He can do anything he wants to do. Not only is his power without limit, but it doesn't cost him anything. When God does something, he doesn't run out of energy. He doesn't get tired. He isn't, you know, down on, down on power. So think about God as being unlimited in his power. And a power that doesn't cost him anything. To help us understand this, the psalmist describes God's power in creation. So 
But to do that, he tells us that God merely speaks. It's like he thinks things into existence. How much easier could it be? <laughs> so he's showing us that God has this incredible power and it doesn't cost him anything. Could you read verses 6 to 9? تمام اهل زمین از خداوند بترسند جمعی سکنه رب مسکون از او بترسند زیرا که او گفت و شد او ام فرمود و قائم گردید by god's word by god's breath it all comes کلام خدا با نفس خدا so he tells us that god's power is huge okay پس در واقع اینو داره ما میگه که قدرت خداوند خیلی عظیم و نامحدود and if you look at a telescope, or if you study the galaxies, you get to see how big God's power is. There are billions of galaxies. There are so many we could name every galaxy after you and you. And you. <laughs> and run out of people's names. Yeah. One galaxy, for example, is the Milky Way. There's a hundred billion stars in the Milky Way. That's a lot of stars. Each star is a sun. If you hollowed out our sun, you could put a million planet Earths inside of it. Some suns could hold 500 million of our suns inside them. That's how big the universe is. So light travels at 300,000 kilometers a second. Which is fast. You, in one second, you could go 37 times back and forth across Canada. <laughs> you wouldn't see very much, though. <laughs> now, if you were to travel from Earth to the Moon at the speed of light, 300,000 kilometers a second, it would take you one and a half seconds. To get to the moon. If you were to travel to our sun, it would take eight minutes. If you travel to the next sun after ours, traveling at 300 kilometers a second, it would take four and a half years. If you would travel to the edge of the Milky Way from planet Earth, traveling at 300,000, I'm going to really give you all these numbers. <laughs> if you travel to the edge of the Milky Way at the speed of light, it would take you 10,000 years. Wow. If you got to the edge of the Milky Way, and you wanted to travel to the next galaxy, which is called Andromeda, traveling at the speed of light, 
would take you two and a half million years. <laughs> it's big. Yes. And God spoke it into existence. Hallelujah. He is powerful. Amen. But if we look inside of us, there are 30 trillion cells inside of us. Do you okay? I'm messing you up, Mark. The numbers. Um, <laughs> and each cell is like a little city. Uh, inside our cells we have a chromosome. It's DNA and protein mixed together. And it, it's like a little spiral, like a spring. And it contains enough information about you to fill 4,000 books. Oh, wow. If somebody said if you took all the information from all the cells and put them into books, it would, it would fill the Grand Canyon wow. just from your body. Wow. These spirals in your cell, you can stretch them out to seven feet long, it's about this high in one cell. Uh, on, um, sorry, what is that long? The, 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 the chromosome stretches out. Chromosome, uh, if you want to see it, it's about seven feet. 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 Seven um, and if you added all the chromosomes in your body, you could go to the moon and back, stretch them up, <laughs> a moon back, a hundred thousand And God spoke it into existence. Hallelujah. He's powerful. Yeah. Could you read verse 10? God has power to create, God has power to control. Yes, verse 10. Amen. But the plants of the Lord stand firm forever. Amen. God is in control. Very powerful. I used to have a 1964 Valiant car. Uh, and um, sometimes it would get stuck. This is when I was a teenager. And in the winter time, sometimes it wouldn't work. It would spin on the ice. The wheels would spin. Hmm. So I sometimes I lived I we lived on a on a, on a street uh, where that faced into a highway. And I would park, park my car on the street and it would face the highway. But sometimes when the wheels wouldn't go in the winter, they were spinning on the ice. I put the car in gear and get out of the car and try and push it. Not very smart. <laughs> and then it would start to catch and move. And I would be hopping along trying to get into it. <laughs> Not very smart. <laughs> if my car was out of control. <laughs> Some people think that God is out of control. <laughs> the world is out of control. <laughs> but God is in control. <laughs> All the plans that he makes cannot be thwarted. Mm -hmm. 
Have you ever pried off an, the back of an old watch? And there's wheels and there's springs all spinning around. And it looks, and you're wondering, what are they all doing going everywhere? <laughs> and you turn it over. And you see that everything's working right. And sometimes it feels like we're looking at things spinning and going nowhere. Just remember that God's, the time is all in God's hand. Amen. So we need to worship God because He's so powerful. Amen. Could you read Job 26, 14 for me? Job, Job 26, verse 14. Job is going to, in the, book, in the book of Job, it talks about the power of God, but I want you to understand, see, hear this verse, it's so clear about how great His power is. It talks about the cre it talks about the creation then you just read that. Okay. Ayub bab 26 ayah 14 rajab khilqat sohbat Yeah. Bible's talking about God's power in creation. And it says that's just the edge or the fringe of what he's like. As amazing as God is, we don't see or understand hardly any of how powerful he is. Yeah, that's just a whisper of his power. Who then can understand the thunder of his power? So we should worship God because he's powerful, right? We should worship God because of his presence with us. Could you read verses um, 13 in Psalm 33, verses 13, um, 14, and 15? Mazmur 33, ayah 16 to akhar 15, it says, Az asman khudavand nazaraf gand, wa jami bani adam ra negariz. Az makan sukunat khish nazar miyaf gand, بر جمعی ساکنان جهان او که دلهای ایشان را جمعی سرشده است و اعمال ایشان را درک نموده است God is powerful خداوند خیلی قدرتمنده That means he's large and in charge یعنی بزرگ هست و همه چیز رو در کنترل داره But God is also very present or what, we, what theologians call omnipresent it means that God is everywhere fully there. This is, this is a beautiful truth about God. Have you ever gone to the lake at night? Or the ocean. And it's there's a big moon on the on the sky on the on, on the horizon. When you look across the water, you see the the light from the moon coming right at you. And you walk, and it's right there. And you run, and it's right there. 
And you run back, and it's still that line is still right there. Right? That's like the presence of God. No matter where you go, He's right there. That's so wonderful. That's so beautiful. The idea that God is there and, and, and is everywhere present also speaks to the fact that God knows everything. He sees me. He watches me. But he knows not just all the things about the outside of me, he knows what's going on inside of me. He knows what I'm thinking. That can be scary. <laughs> How do you feel about a God who knows everything about you? I think we need to embrace this. I think we need to be excited about the fact that God knows everything about us. We can't hide anything from Him. It doesn't matter who we are or what we've done. He knows it. And He still loves you. He loves you with His eyes wide open. And that is such a beautiful thing. Such a beautiful thing. Psalm 23. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. So the, another reason to worship God is not just because he's powerful, but, but because he's everywhere. But here's what's interesting. Uh, Psalm 33 tells us that God is powerful. And it tells us that he, he is everywhere present. But it also tells us that God loves us. Could you read verses 18 down to 22 and look for the word love? تا جان ایشان را از موت رهایی بخشد و ایشان را در قهد زنده نگه دارد جان ما منتظر خداوند می باشد او اعانت و سپر ماست آمین. زیرا که دل ما در او شادی می کند و در نام, مق... در نام قدوس او توکل می داریم ای خداوند رحمت تو بر ما باد چنان که امیدوار تو بوده آمین so he's powerful. پس قدرتش He's everywhere, and he loves me. And the word that's used for love here is the Hebrew word chesed. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Which means unfailing love. Wow. It's a love that can never stop. Wouldn't it be neat if we could measure love? <laughs> Supposing I invented a meter, a love meter. I put it on someone's wrist. And we measure how much love they have. <laughs> Would that be cool? Yes. <laughs> So imagine a boy is dating a girl. <laughs> and he takes her out for that special night. <laughs> where there's big yellow M. McDonald. Yellow M. McDonald is that. You didn't know that. 
<laughs> gotcha. It's a big LOM, and he finally drums up enough energy to ask to tell her that he loves her. He says, I, I, I love you. <laughs> and she laughs. No, you don't love me. <laughs> yes, I do. Pulls out the meter, puts it on his wrist. <laughs> uh, okay, and they live happily ever after. <laughs> Or imagine a daughter comes to her dad <laughs> and says, I want to borrow the car. And he says, no. She says, you don't love me. He says, watch this. <laughs> he pulls out the meter. <laughs> she sees he loves her. <laughs> And everything is fine. <laughs> if there was a, such a thing as a love meter, <laughs> we could not measure God's love. Yes. God so loved the world. Oh. Hallelujah. Wow. That's all the people on the world in the world. He so loved the world that he gave. There is no one who loves like our God. So why would we worship anything other than God? He is all powerful. He's everywhere. He knows all about us. And he loves us. Could you read Zephaniah 317 for me, please? This is my favorite verse. I sign it under my name. Zephaniah 317. Z E P H. I can't imagine what God's voice sounds like. But he sings about us. About me. He delights in me. He saves me. That's wonderful. So why do we worship anything else? Hmm. Nothing else is as powerful as God. Nothing is everywhere with us like God. Nothing is knows us like God. And no one could ever love us as much as God does. Those are some good reasons to love, to worship God. Let's pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for being such an amazing God. Thank you for what we have learned today about you. In our search for someone to worship. 
وقتی که داریم دنبال کسی میگردیم برای پرشته شد May we remember there is no one like you And may we adore you and worship you more and more and more each day. It's hard for us to understand a God as powerful as you. It's hard for us to understand a God who can be everywhere. It's hard for us to understand a God who knows everything about us. And sometimes we forget that you love us. Thank you for that. Help us to believe even more. And honor you with our lives of worship. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.